Good morning everyone, my name is Rick and I welcome you back to my channel. It is October 31st here in Florida and it is Halloween so I dressed up. You can't see me but in the middle of the video I might pop up so um, don't be scared. <laughs> It's really a gorgeous morning here in Florida. It's about 75 degrees and uh, we had a nice cool front move in so it's really dry and the temperatures will only stay in the 70s so that's a really a big welcome blessing for us here in Florida. And I'm going to start showing you some plants and I'm surprised that uh, this elliptica is blooming this late in the season. It's actually more impressive in person and the flowers always look smaller in pictures but they're actually a pretty good size so yeah that's hoya elliptica and it blooms here in florida for me usually the end of march until uh october so but this is the the longest into the season that i've seen it bloom and uh let's see what else is going on over here we got uh, this Gloriosum philodendron has been multiplying quite a bit and I've actually chopped away at it. Um, but it seems to be doing well in that space. And uh, another surprise is that I'm going to get another flower um, umbo here in this Saba Borneo. It's a type of Vatoanoides Hoya. Uh, um, if you've seen my other videos, it does blush pretty well. Yeah, that's a really nice Hoya to have. And over here I picked up uh, this uh, Phalaenopsis. It's called Summer Love, I believe. And uh, I got it at Accent orchids here in St. Petersburg so if you haven't uh, been there you definitely should go they have a lot of rare um, um, bulbophyomes and lots and lots of other orchids and they also do a lot of shows around and this is Hoya medinillifolia it's really happy here in this table and here's an Oncinium twinkle that is and spike has about three spikes there and the occultata i literally has bloomed non-stop for like seven months and uh yeah the the weather is fantastic and that's where first she's actually scared of the clown that i have running loose in the backyard but she'll be okay it's her uh first encounter with a clown actually quite a bit happening uh, here in the fall. I think 
the plants are, you know, kind of relieved that it's not like 100 degrees. So there's, uh, the orchids are definitely happier. And they're putting out some really nice flowers that last longer than they do when it's so hot out. So that is a pot risky business. And it's really cute. It's very fall color. And uh, this is from my, uh, my last video. Somebody ID'd it as uh, philodendron serpents. But um, yeah, I'll have to do some more research into that and see where they got that name of uh, Squamicali from and if they're synonymous or whatever it is. And over here I have this this Chaco, Chaco Red. And uh, the beauty of this philodendron is the back side. You can see it's really, really pretty. And what else? And I got like Mr. Mustache Phonopsis here. And over here I have this a uh, oncinium. This is a share some kind of sherry baby, but it's really really fragrant and uh, really really pretty. Like the the yellow and the red uh, contrast is really stunning, and it really does smell like um, like chocolate. And uh, this is an oncinium that I picked out yesterday. It smells uh, heavenly. It's a twinkle. So I guess it's their time of year to shine because two of my other plants that I have are spiking at this time. And they call this one uh, Oncinium Twinkle Red, Red Fantasy. It smells really strong too. And I picked up this at Artstone here in St. Petersburg. I really like that uh, clear edge around the flower. On this a um, Phalaenopsis, it didn't have a tag on it, but it's really, really cute. And I pulled this Hoya out from the side of the house. It's a Hoya obovada, basically the easiest Hoya I find. Uh, to grow and it's one of the really nicer uh, foliage plants. I, the leaves can get really splashy uh, a lot more splashy than this I've seen and uh, they can get quite big like this leaf is about the size of my hand um, yeah it's basically you don't have to do anything to this plant if you fit this one just gets rainwater and that's basically it um, if you grow it in the house you just have to water it maybe once once a week in in the summer and maybe uh, every two weeks in the winter depending on how dry your indoor conditions are but if you want to if you're a new Hoya collector you want to start out with an easy uh, attractive foliage plant that actually is not hard to bloom either so you might want to try out uh, Hoya Abovada. And this is uh, Hoya Croniana or Hoya Lacanosa black leaf and it's called that because in the presence of uh, strong light or grow lights or a little bit of sun it turns black and this is not the darkest I've seen but uh, in the winter for me it gets a lot darker when I put it in full sun outside so it's getting um, it's getting there so I'll show you guys this probably in January see it'll be almost completely black so yeah that's Hoya Croniana black leaf and uh, this over here is a Hoya diversifolia variegated it's somewhat new in the trade. I've uh, gotten this plant about four months ago. And it's kind of grown on me because the variegation is quite beautiful. It's basically 
two different sh it comes out kind of white and then as it, uh, the leaves get older the variegated form um, uh, part gets really green actually um, as you can see in these older leaves so it makes a very attractive um, plant so I don't know I've never seen a bloom from it but from the leaves it does look like a diversifolia and the flowers are probably the same and um, yeah so it's kind of it's a nice uh, Hoya if you like variegated and here I have two different uh, packet clottas. Uh, this one is more uh, outer variegated and this one is inner variegated. They're both very attractive, but I do prefer this one because it has uh, the dark edge to it. And that seems to be common in Hoyas that are, that are outer variegated. They get the, um, the dark edge. Uh, so yeah, the, these are two different clones of packet clotta. And uh, this is Hoya Patella again. About two videos ago, I had this uh, Hoya blooming in Weka, uh in a four inch pot. Uh, and this one I found blooming in the shade house in a two inch pot um, in soil in my uh, growing mix. And I was really surprised because I had not never been able to bloom uh, this Hoya in soil before. And here I am in this little pot and this little plant, and it's in bloom. And the flowers are pretty good size. They're probably an inch across. And a beautiful color, too. And from uh, pictures I've seen online, a large specimen plant of this Hoya can have can be covered in you know over a hundred uh, flowers and that's uh, really stunning to see. And here I have uh, Hoya Matrata and I wanted to show you some of the diversity just within this uh, species of this uh, Hoya. This is the one I've been growing forever. Uh, this is just a Hoya Matrata. I don't know where it originated. Um, this is one I acquired about uh, a few months ago, probably eight months ago. It has like almost like cabbage-like leaves. They're pretty huge and they're, um, they fold in. Uh, it's quite an interesting form of this Hoya. And then this one I got from Indonesia. Um, you can see it's a little different and it's our this one is already forming one of its adapted leaves yeah Hoy Matrata is uh, puts out these leaves that curl on each on each other to form little habitats for ants and ants live there and in return uh, the plant gets nutrients from the ant droppings so Hoya uh, Lambii does that, and Hoya uh, Darwinii does that as well. And uh, this is another form of Hoya Matrata. Uh, this one came from Thailand, and it came with the name uh, Matrata Big Leaf. So yeah, that's another, another form, and I'm sure there are quite a few more that I'm not uh, aware of. So yeah, that's Hoya Matrata for you. It's very diverse when it comes to morphology. And this orchid over here I got recently. It's called Sagrit Wax, and the flowers are really, really waxy. And I like the colors, uh, very seasonal colors. Also this uh, Trick or Treat. Very attractive. It's been blooming for, I think, this is like the third week it's been in bloom. So yeah, my orchids are actually enjoying these temperatures a lot more than they uh, do the 95 and humid temperatures during uh, the summer that we get here. 
And this orchid over here is a Bulbophyllum sanguine opunctatum. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, but the flowers are actually very attractive. I like these, like almost like a candy stripe um, flower color. And it actually doesn't smell uh, bad. It actually smells pretty good for a Bulbophyllum. And this has been in bloom for over a week, so it's kind of impressive. And the, the plant isn't too big. It probably has about eight or nine pseudobulbs. And uh, it's happily growing here amongst a friend here, Hoya croniana. And there's a verticillata there. There is a uh, Hoya geneve. There's a bunch of other things here. So, yeah, that's Bulbophyllum sanguopactatum. And that's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope I didn't scare you. And happy Halloween, and I'll see you back next week. Bye-bye.